Awesome. So we're going to go ahead and get started then. Um, let's all make sure we've got two blocks and a blanket today. And then we're going to sit on a block or sit on a blanket, sit however you'd like. You can sit in Adrasana, you can sit in Sukhasana, you can sit in Siddhasana, you can sit however you want. <laughs> there is just for you, Sandy. And then once you're established in your seat, I want you to soften your gaze or close your eyes. And then I want you to figure out what you need to do to fidget in the body. So it feels like you're in that balance or that sweet spot between effort and ease, where there's an alertness and aliveness to your pose, but there's also a sense of softness to it. And that might mean that you need to require or move your hands so that the chest is open, the rib cage can expand. It might mean that you need to remove some flesh underneath the sit bones or even roll the shoulders or move the head around just a little bit. But find your sweet spot where there's an attention, but there is also just an allowing. And then we'll start by just allowing ourselves to take an exhale out through the mouth once you've found your sweet spot. And we'll do that two more times. Big breath in through the nose. Audible breath out. And one more time. Big breath in. And then allow the lips to close. And just gently begin to deepen the breath. And to invite in a deeper breath, we might just allow our awareness to rest at the tips of the nostrils and just feel the breath as it comes in and sense the body as it goes out. And there's nothing more to do than just to find that sweet spot, the alertness and yet the ease, the energy but the receptivity. And you might begin to observe that just by allowing yourself to bring your awareness to the nose and to the breath, you start to feel other things in the body start to open and relax and just allow that to happen. You might start to notice that you become more centered in this moment. And in our practice today, our invitation is always first and foremost to come back to the breath so that the breath can drop us into this moment. And to find that sweet spot between our sense of effort, our sense of ease, our sense of alertness and relaxation, and allowing that to be our guide pose all the time. So you can keep your eyes closed if you'd like. Allow both arms to trip to the floor to your right and to your left. On your next inhalation, reach your left arm up and over your head. And then as you exhale, take a little side bend towards the right. You might need to walk the right hand out a little bit. Bend the right elbow slightly. Soften the right shoulder away from the ear. And then root down into your left hip as you reach out through your left fingers. Taking a deeper breath into the left side body. And on your next inhalation, you'll gently come back up through center, lowering your left hand to the floor, taking a moment to notice what you notice in the center. And then next in-breath, inhale, sweep your right arm over your head. And then exhale, little side bend over towards the left. The left hand might need to walk a little bit to the left as you softly bend the left elbow, draw the left shoulder away from your left ear, and then root down into your right hip. Reach out through your right fingers. Nice job. Inhale, come back up through center. Exhale, lower the hand down. Take a moment to notice. And then we'll do that one more time. Inhale, sweep the left arm up and overhead. Exhale, little side bend towards the right. Adjusting the right hand as necessary. Bending the right elbows gently, softening the right shoulder down. Now this time you're going to drop your right ear towards your right shoulder just a little bit more and see how it feels to let the head hang a little bit more. You might choose to stay here or on your next in-breath. Keep the torso as it is, but reach the right, sorry, left arm up to the sky. And then reach the left arm back towards the left parallel-ish to the floor. Now, first things first, activate your left hand. So spread wide through the fingers and notice if you notice anything happening on the mat. You might then turn your left palm to the left, 
see if that does anything for you. You might turn the left palm up and you're just playing with what you notice happening in your left side of the neck. Nice work on your next in breath. Reach out through the left fingertips, lower the left hand to the floor. Use your right hand to push your head back up to center. Take a moment to drop both hands and just notice what you notice here. You might circle the shoulders if that feels good to you, but just observe. And we'll go ahead and try that on the other side. So go ahead and come to stillness, arms out to the side. Inhale, sweep your right arm up and over your head. And then exhale, little side bend over towards your left. Bend into the left elbow, soften the left shoulder, and then allow your left ear to drop towards your left shoulder a little bit more and notice how that feels. You might stay here or sweep your right arm up to the sky, and maybe back parallel-ish to the floor towards the right. First spread wide through the right hand and feel how that feels. And then you might flex through the hand and turn the palm of the hand to the right away from you. You might turn the palm up. So you're just playing with what's happening in your right side of the neck as the hand changes its variation. Nice work. On your next in breath, go ahead and come to center. Reach out through the right hand to bring your torso up. Bring the left hand to the left side of your head to bring the head up to center. And then gently release both hands. Take a moment to just notice what you notice as you breathe here. Keeping the gaze closed or the eyes soft, switch the cross of your legs. So if one leg is bent, see if maybe you can bend the other leg and straighten the other leg. If your legs are crossed, try crossing the other leg. Fantastic. Yeah. And then when you're ready, let's inhale, sweep both arms up and overhead. As you exhale, start to twist to your right. Your left hand comes to the outside edge of your right thigh, right hand maybe to the floor behind you. You'll take about three to four breath cycles here. I want you to lift up as you breathe in. And then as you exhale, you might slightly pull with the left hand, push with the right, draw the right low belly in, and rotate your rib cage to the right. And then again, you're noticing what's happening in your back left shoulder blade. Next in breath, come up through center. And then as you exhale, let's twist to the other side. So right hand to the outside edge of left knee, left hand right behind you. And then you'll take a few breath cycles here. Again, lifting as you inhale. And as you exhale, you rotate. And you're just feeling into how this feels, noticing what is happening in the breath, in this moment, in this shape. Nice job. Inhale, come back up through center, both arms high. And then one more time towards the right, going over to the right this time. So now you might choose to stay here with your left hand pulling against your right thigh. You might choose to draw your right hand back behind you and maybe hold on to the back of your left hip, your left shirt. But you're just going to pause and you're going to breathe. And if you've done that with the right hand, hug the right shoulder blade onto the back body, press your heart forward and rotate to the right. Nice job. If the right hand is behind you, gently release it back to the floor. Inhale, come back up through center. And then exhale, we'll go to the other side. Left hand behind you, right hand outside of left knee. You might choose to stay here, just inhaling and lifting. You might bring your left hand to the low back on the right side, or maybe even your right low hip. Wherever you are, you're just seeing if you can lengthen as you breathe in, and then exhale and rotate. Nice work. Next in breath, if the left hand is behind you, gently release it. Inhale both arms high. And as you exhale, lower your hands down to the floor. Take a moment to just notice what you notice here. Again, rolling the shoulders if you need to, moving the head if you need to. Before we go further, we'll go ahead and interlace hands behind our low back. Draw the shoulders up towards your ears, shoulder blades together on your back, and then reach your hands either back behind you or down towards the floor. It depends upon what feels good in your neck and shoulders, and then adjust your head if necessary. So sometimes it feels good to let the head crane forward. Sometimes it feels good to let the head go up or go to one side or the other, but you're just paying attention to what feels good to you. And then we'll gently release that. Come forward to hands and knees. Before you make your way there, let's bring our blocks to the upper outer corners of our space and our blanket to the middle of our mat. All 
free. And then once we're established there, we are going to find static back as Pete Agostu calls it. So make sure your shoulders are directly over your wrists, your knees are directly underneath your hips. And then I want you to drop your heart between the gates of your arms. And then I want you to drop your head like sad little cows from California, well, not from California. <laughs> and you're just going to pause and you're going to breathe and you're going to energize your arms as much as you can as you careen the heart to the floor and you let the belly drop. And you'll notice that your tailbone is naturally going to lift and your buttocks will naturally blossom here, but you'll just breathe here and you'll notice what this feels like. Now, the practice is focusing today on opening up our thoracic spine. So that's why we started with side bends and we're doing twists. Now, as best as you can, I want you to keep everything in your body exactly as it is, except your rib cage. You're going to draw your ribs over to the left, and then you're going to draw your ribs up towards the sky, and then you're going to draw your ribs over towards the right, and then you're going to drop your ribs back down through center, and then you're going to do that again. So you're going to go over to the left, you're going to come back up. You're going to go over to the right, and then you're going to come back down through the center. And you're going to do that two more times on your own. But as best as you can, just move the ribs so the head doesn't move, the tummy doesn't move, the pelvis doesn't move. You're just moving. Yeah, I mean, that's hard, but we're just trying to move the ribs. And after you've done a total of four, you're going to just come back to center, and you're just going to notice what that feels like. And then we'll try to do that to the other side. So our ribs will now just go to the right. And then they'll come up and back behind us. And then we'll go over just to the left. And then we'll go down through the center. And again to the right. Up and back behind you. Swinging over to the left. And then down through center. And then you'll do two more of those just on your own. And we're just trying to isolate the movement in the thoracic spine. Yeah. And after this next set, you'll just come to center and take some cats and cows and notice how that feels better. It gives you the ability to get into a more natural pattern that you're familiar with. But you might also notice, yeah, look at that, that you've got more of the capacity to round through the spine than you might have previously. And you're pausing and you're breathing. You can actively push that floor away. Fantastic. And then let's go ahead and find ourselves into a neutral tabletop position once again. Fantastic. Now from here, we're going to go ahead and spin our toes over towards the right. And then you're going to slide your left leg back. You might need to walk your right hand forward just a little bit as you pivot towards the left and reach up through your top arm. Now our left arm is going to come alongside our ears and I want you to push down through your bottom hand, push down through your back foot and see if you can do a Michael Jackson pelvic thrust. The tailbone comes forward. Maybe you push down through the bottom elbow, bend and look up towards the sky just a little bit more. Fantastic. Nice work. On your next exhalation, we're going to come back through center, hands and knees. And then we'll try all that to the other side. So swing your feet to the left. Slide your right foot back. Walk your left hand forward just a smidge. And then you'll reach up through your top arm. Then you'll sweep your right arm alongside your ears. And then we'll find our Michael Jackson pelvic thrust by first pushing into our back foot. Push down into our left hand. Lengthen our tailbone towards our foot. And then reach up through the chest. Nice, steady breath. Nice work. On your next inhale, come down, back through hands and knees. Take a cat and a cow. Nice work. And then we'll try all that once again. All right, so go ahead and come to neutral. Swing your feet towards the right. This time, I want you to walk your right hand forward a little bit, and you'll have the option to come onto your fingertips like cousin thing and stay there. Spin your left foot to the floor. Reach your left arm up. Fantastic. Now, this time as you reach up through your left arm, you're going to take a big breath in. As you exhale, you're going to dive underneath the space of your hand and your knee. And then you inhale and you come back up. And you've got four of these. And you're just finding the breath. Exhaling, diving underneath. Inhaling, coming up. Exhale, diving underneath, carving through space. Inhale, coming up. Here's our last one. Exhale, diving underneath. Awesome. Inhale, come back up. Now, as mindfully as you can, lower the total palm to the floor. 
shift your weight forward and float your left leg parallel-ish to the floor. Fantastic. Now you're going to stay here for a few breaths. I want you to see if you can squeeze your top glute a little bit. And you might need to draw your left leg back just a smidge in order to find that. Yeah. Next, exhale, lower the foot, then inhale, lower your hand, come back through center. Take a moment in neutral and just notice how that feels. Cat and cow, if you'd like, and you're just finding your breath, finding the movement. And then as we're ready, we'll try all that to the other side. So go ahead and swing your legs towards the left. Slide your right foot back. You'll walk your left hand forward just a little bit and come onto the tips of the fingers and then inhale, sweep up through your right arm. Fantastic, take a breath in. Next exhale, start to carve the hand underneath you, reaching back behind you. And then inhale, coming back up. And you've got three more, so total of four, carving under, finding our obliques, finding that rotation in our ribs. Yep, exhale underneath. Inhale up for our last one. Nice job. Now, as you come up this time, lower the palm all the way to the floor. Shift your weight forward, float the right leg up. And you want to flex through that foot. And if you need to, you can touch your own butt and see if you can engage your under butt. And then you'll lift the arm back up and you'll just pause and you'll breathe. Nice work. On your next exhale, lower the foot to the floor, then lower the hand to the floor. Come back through hands and knees. And this time, I want you to take some barrel rolls. So we spent some time trying to open up the side body, the front body, and you'll take full body barrel rolls. Notice if your head wants to go along for the ride, if it wants to go in opposition or not. And you'll take a total of four in one direction. And then once you've done your four, you'll switch directions. And you just feel what it feels like to get into the rib cage. Nice job. I think you should have two more breath cycles here. And then we'll go ahead and come to a still neutral spot. Nice work. Okay, let's walk knees, ankles, and shins together. Curl all 10 toes under and start to walk your hands back. You might wanna lift your knees a smidge. And then put your knees back down to make sure all of your foot is there. And then check to make sure pinky toes are trapped underneath. Cool. Now for today, let's go ahead and reach both arms forward. Your right arm is going to cross over. Your left arm is going to hook it. And then you're going to look towards your right. And you're pushing your right arm into your left, your left into your right. And then seeing if you can maybe soften any tension around that right shoulder. Nice work. Next in breath, gently release. Both arms come forward and then we'll switch sides. So left arm goes to the right, right arm hooks it. You're resisting that. So the right arm is pushing to the left, left is pushing into the right. And then you look towards your left and you pause and you breathe. Nice work. Soften any tension around your left shoulder. Nice work. Inhale, come back through center. Exhale, release both arms down. Interlace hands awkward opposite. Interlace behind you. Draw shoulders up towards your ears. Shoulder blades down the back and reach the hands either down to the floor or back behind you. And then again, notice what happens if you move the head up and down or a little bit to the right and to the left. But find a spot that works good for you. Gently release that. Last thing in toe squat. Inhale, both arms high. Bend your right elbow. Grab your right elbow with your left hand. Press the right elbow to the left. Pull it to the right. Sorry. Push it to the right. Pull it to the left. Throw your front ribs in and back. Head right on top of your spine. And then you'll take a breath in. Inhale, both arms high. Exhale, switch. Grab the left elbow with the right hand. Push it to the left as you pull it to the right. Notice if you're grimacing in your face. You got one more breath cycle here. Next in breath, both arms high. As you exhale, hands to the floor, pitter patter your feet. Happy temper tantrum, hooray, you are done with that. Perhaps pitter patter the tops of the feet onto the floor if you'd like, or conversely, be in a more still spot. And then you'll take the counter stretch, lifting one end or both knees up and away from the floor. And you're just noticing how you feel. How does it feel to move through the foot? How does it feel to move in the breath? Cool. When you are ready, let's go ahead and make our way back to hands and knees. And then walk your hands, one hand crit forward. 
Curl both sets of toes under and lift your pelvis up and back towards downward facing dog. Now, this is going to sound weird, so we're gonna listen very closely and see how that goes. Let's bend both of our knees, bend both of our knees. There we go. And then I want you to spin your left heel to the right and put the foot down like you're gonna take a warrior one. Okay, now with your left foot really pushing down, bend your right knee a lot and then see if you can straighten your left leg. Straighten the left leg. We should be finding crap on the outside edge of our left foot through our left hip. And if you need more help, you bend your right knee as you push your left hip up towards the sky and your left heel towards the floor. And then we'll see if that breathing thing is something that we're considering and maybe come back to that. Yep. So I T-band all the way down to the outer edge of the foot. I also feel it in my left rib cage if I really spin my hips to the right. And then you'll go ahead and inhale, come back through center, bend both knees, and we'll try that to the other side. So you'll spin your right foot to the floor like you're taking warrior one. And then you'll bend your left knee. And then you'll straighten your right leg as best as you can and push your right hip up toward the wall and the ceiling meet. And you just breathe. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Fantastic. Next in breath, come back through center. Now, go ahead and straighten both your legs to whatever extent you wish to push the hands down and forward, lift up through the happy armpits. And then as you're ready, you're going to bend your knees and slowly walk to the top of your space. Now, when you get to the top of your space, separate your feet about hip distance apart. Your blocks are there should you need them, but you might not. What we're going to do is something similar to what we just did. So you're going to bend just your left knee and let your head just drape forward. Just bend your left knee. Some of you will stay here and be like, this is enough of a stretch. Then I'm going to stay right here. Some of you will start to walk your hands towards your left foot. Maybe they'll go to the outside edge of your left foot. All the way over. Oh, yeah, right. Isn't that crazy? And then you're going to notice if you can drop your head. And your blocks are there if the floor feels way too far. Yep. And then you might push your right hip towards the right as you bend the left knee and you drop your head and you breathe. Well, yeah, we got all that. And then as we're ready to come out, we're gonna slowly straighten both legs, walk our spine back to center and just hang over your legs and notice if you notice anything different between the right and the left. Fantastic. Now well, some of you will stay here. Others of us are gonna bend just our right leg and then once you bend the right leg, you might be like, yeah, I'm going to hang out there. You might start to walk your hands over towards the right foot, maybe even towards the right side of your space. And then you might decide that you're going to keep bending into that right leg and send your left hip over towards the left as you drop your head and you remember to breathe. Oh, and I forgot to say this. This is a fun one. Notice what happens if you pay attention to where the weight is on your feet. It really changes for me how I feel the sensation in the outer edge of my hip. Awesome, soft. We've got one more breath cycle here. Right knee's bent, left leg straight. And then you'll come back through center. And then you'll get to try that one more time on your own. So you just pay attention to how that feels for you. And I really do encourage you to explore. So you know, might notice that if your weight's more on the outer edge of the foot versus the inner edge of the foot, you'll feel different sensations happening. Well, actually both, but in this instance, pay particular attention to your the straight one, your right leg. Yeah. Um, how if you have more weight on the outer edge versus the inner edge, that feels different. And when you're bending into your left knee, where that changes how the weight is transferring up into your hip and into your back. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and inhale, come through center, and then go to the other side. And then again, you bend just the right knee. And then pay attention to how the weight is in your feet. If you can relax your toesies or if they're gripping for dear life. Yeah. And you're just pausing in your breathing. Did your breath stop? Is there tension in your jaw? Yeah. Nice work. Next in breath, go ahead and come back through center. And then just take a moment to settle there and just see how it feels to hang over your legs. How the weight is transferred in the feet, how the head can be heavy. From here, you'll grab one of your blocks and you will slide it pretty high up in your inner thighs. 
awkwardly high up. Yep, on the first or the second setting. Yep, and then from here, let's slide our hands up our shins to lift our spine parallel to the floor. Today, we actually wish to be parallel. So I want you now to pay attention to how the weight is in your feet. Can it be on the big toe mound and the pinky toe mound, the inner and the outer edge of the feet? Can you block up your buttock back behind you and then reach your crown forward as you draw the shoulder blades onto your back body? Yeah, that looks great. When you're ready, draw one hand to one hip. Draw the other hand to the other hip. And then inhale, bring yourself all the way up to stand. If you are dizzy at all, drop your chin towards your chest and just take a few breath cycles there. Great. And then we are ready to move on. Gently allow the eyes to open. Inhale, sweep your arms up and overhead. And then we're going to exhale and take a little side bend towards the right. So we're going to reach up through our left arm, and then our right arm is going to drop down. We're going to see if we can push it against our thigh, maybe even against your hip, depending upon how your torso feels. But I want you to make sure both hip bones are still pointing forward. And then your right rib cages are going to want to sneak back. So can you sneak the right rib cage forward and then breathe equally long your left side body? So let's draw this hip back. This hip back. There we go. This rib forward. Aha. Next in breath, go ahead and come up through center. Lower both hands alongside your hips. Just take a moment to notice what that feels like. And then we'll go to the other side. So inhale, sweep both arms up and overhead. And then exhale, little side bend to the right. So right hand will reach up, left arm will descend. And we want to make sure that both of our hips are still pointing straight forward. So the tendency is when we side bend, our right hip will go forward and our left hip will pull back. So you want to pull your left hip forward just a little bit. And then you want to pull your left rib cage forward too. So that you can do a lateral side bend and you just pause and you breathe. Seeing if you can soften any tension around your mouth. Now, yeah. next in breath, go ahead and come up through center. And then exhale, lower the hand down. Now, from here again, hands interlace at your low back. Draw the shoulders up towards your ears, shoulder blades together on your back, and lift your heart up. Now, for this one, I'd like you to see if you can keep your elbows slightly bent and hug them towards each other in order to lift the chest. And you just pause, you'll breathe here, you'll notice how that feels. And then gently, you'll relax that and release that down. Cool. Look at your feet. Some of you might need to walk your feet in a little bit or out a little bit. It just totally depends upon you. But we are going to sit. So hands first to heart center. You're going to bend your knees and pop a squat. Cool. Now I want you to see if you can keep pushing your sternum forward and see, keep sinking your butt down. Now for this one, you're going to take a rotation by pulling up through the right low belly and drawing your left elbow towards the right side of your space. Now look down at your knees. See if you can hook, actually it's not hook, plant your left elbow to the inside edge of your left knee. Left knee, left knee, fantastic. Now from here, you're gonna scoop your left hip back. So that's the knee that you're touching, draw it back. Push your hands into each other, lift up through your heart. Ha -ha, look at that, scoop your low belly and rotate towards the right. And you're just pausing and breathing as you're pulling your left hip back, left hip. Nice job. Inhale, come up through center. And then we're going to try that to the other side. So now our right elbow is going to come to the inside edge of your right knee. You pull your right hip back. You push your hands into each other. Sternum comes forward. Scoop the low belly on the left side. And we rotate towards the left. Fantastic. Nice job. Inhale, come back through center. Exhale, squeeze the block. Stand up tall. That was a lot in the leg. Isn't that cool in the rib cage though? Yeah. Right? I like that. All right. Next inhale, circle, sweep the arms. Are we hot? Do I need to turn the heat on? No. Okay. Exhale, hinge forward at the hips, forward fold. Okay. Now listen very closely. You'll inhale and halfway lift. As you exhale, you're going to bend your knees enough to plant your palms. Then you are going to take a bunch of small steps back to plank with the block. Bunch of small steps back to plank with that block. If you are people at home and you still have 
blanket there. I'm sorry, blanket fairy did not come. And then we're gonna pause and we're gonna breathe. And I want you to hug your outer hips in. Yep, I want you to hug your inner thighs around that block. And then I want you to see if you can draw your pubic bone up to your belly button and then your tailbone back. Yeah, fantastic. Take a deep breath in here. On your next in breath, you're gonna shift your weight forward and then exhale, lower all the way down. Fantastic. Once you touch the floor, just out of awkward convenience, you might need to move that block just a little bit back. Just depends on how it feels with your pubic bone touching the floor and then your inner thighs having space. Okay, from here, let's bring our toenails to the floor. Press all 10 toenails into the mat and then press your pubic bone down as you lightly hug into the block. Now push your hands down a little bit and draw your shoulders up towards your ears and draw your shoulder blades together on your back. Isometrically pull your hands back as you pull your heart forward. Draw your pubic bone down and your tailbone back and your toes back and see if you can find an upper back back bend here. Nice job. Some of you are going to stay right here. Some of you are going to hug the block and lift your legs away from the floor. Fantastic. Some of you are going to stay right there. Some of you are going to hover your hands away from the floor, pressing pubic bone down, hugging into block for three, finding length in the back of the head for two, energy through the toes for one, exhale, lower all the way down. Nice job. Curl your toes under, lightly hug your block. Draw your shoulders up towards your ears and shoulder blades onto the back. And now pull your belly button away from the floor. Yeah. When you're ready, inhale, come up through hands and knees or plank. And exhale, downward facing dog. Fantastic. Now, since we've got that block there, this is a wonderful opportunity to try to send the block back behind you like a Pez dispenser. Yeah. And then push the hands down for as you hug your outer hips in. Nice job, guys and gal. That's fantastic. Keep pulling up through the inner armpits, lifting them up and away from the floor. There we go. Next in breath, feel slight. To bend. You'll start to bend your knees. As you exhale, you'll walk your feet, slow little walks, feet to two hands. And you might do foot at a time. You might take little happy do's. But we're trying to keep our nervous system pretty mellow. Or walk back. That's great too. Fantastic. And then you'll just hang forward at the top or back of your space. Uttanasana. All right, let's add on. Inhale, slide your hands up your shins. Heart and sternum reaches forward, spine parallel to the floor. Yeah, take a breath in here. Check in with your feet again. Are you shifting your weight back or can you come forward just a bit so the weight is equally distributed? On your next exhale, bring one hand to one hip. Bring the other hand to the other hip. Next in breath, bring your spine all the way up to vertical. And then exhale, just relax. Again, if you're dizzy, Chin drops to chest for just a few breath cycles. Oh, nice work. All right, let's add on. Inhale, sweep your arms up and overhead. Grab your left wrist with your right hand. Inhale, reach up. And then exhale, little side bend. Now here, because we don't have the use of our hands, let's check in. See if both of our hands are staying, both of our hands, both of our hips are still pointing forward. So we might need to draw our right rib forward. And just breathe. Next in breath, come up through center. And then exhale, we'll go to the other side. So reaching up and then over to the right. So the left under rib comes forward. Great. And then draw the left hip back just a little smidge, Erica. There you go. Next inhale, come up through center. Exhale, hands open out. Interlace the hands again. This should be awkward opposite interlace, I believe. Other shoulders up towards the ears, shoulder blades together on the back, elbows stay bent. And notice how that pushes your shoulder blades into your heart and that lets you lift the chest. And you just breathe in there. And then you'll gently release that. Okay. Again, check in with your feet. See if you need to walk them in or walk them out. It depends upon your hips. Hands come back to heart center. Take a big breath in and then exhale. You'll start to bend your knees and sit your pelvis down for katasana chair pose. Okay, now same thing we did before. You're gonna push your sternum and heart forward into your thumb. You have that option of taking your left elbow to the inside edge of your left knee, or if you wanna try, you can go towards the outer edge. 
of your right thigh, but you choose what's going to work for you. In either case, you're drawing your outer left hip back. You're pushing down into your hands. You're lifting up through the sternum. You're rotating through the right low belly as you lean your head back. Nice work. Next in breath, come through center. And then exhale, we'll go to the other side. So possibly right elbow to the inside edge of right knee, maybe to the outside edge of the left thigh. Push your hands into each other. Sit your pelvis low. Draw the low belly into, each, into your spine and rotate towards the left. And pause and breathe. Nice work. Next inhale, come back through center. As you exhale, sit a little lower. Reach your arms forward. I know this is me. We've got a breath for three. Lift your heart for two. Exhale for one, inhale, stand up, reach up, look up. And then exhale, hands out to the side, down alongside your hips. Take a moment to pause, take a moment to breathe. And you've got three breath cycles here. And you just notice what you notice. How's the breath moving through the body right now? How are you doing? Great. All right, when you're ready, I'll gently start to open your eyes. And then we're going to see if we can lift up to a little releve. So you're going to push down through your feet, hug into your block, and see if you can lift your toes up. You can do that if you want. And then lower down. We've got 10 of these. You can do whatever you want with your arms. Let's see if you can move with slow movement, slow sense of control. What seems to be the harder part is the descent. If you can get up, then it's like, how do you come down? Hydraulics down. Not about three more. Of course, I wasn't counting. And then notice if you grip your toes as you come up. Well, ideally, we're not like doing that because it translates other places, but I have moments of gripping my toes for dear life. All right. Last one. Fantastic. All right. We're done with that. Inhale, circle, sweep your arms up and overhead. Exhale, fold forward to your hips, Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, bend your knees, plant your palms, walk your feet back to a plank pose. Fantastic. Now, if you'd like to, you'll lower your forearms down if you have wrist issues. Otherwise, You'll stay on your hands. Now we're going to spin our feet over towards the right, stack your left hip on top of the right, and then reach up through your left arm as you hug that block. And we'll breathe for three. Lift your under hip up for two. Whoop. For one. Next in breath, come back through center. You okay? And then we'll try it on the other side. So spinning our heels towards the left, stacking our right hip on top, reaching up through our right arm for three. Four, two, four, one, come back through center. Take a breath cycle in plank. And then as you're ready, shift your weight forward and lower all the way down. Three breaths. All right. Nice job. And then again, when you find yourself on your abdomen, if you need to adjust your block, adjust your block. Sometimes it feels too close to my pelvis and that just feels awkward. If you need to move it back, move it back a little bit. And then make sure that you can internally rotate your thighs so your toenails, all 10 toenails, can touch the floor. And then press the toenails into the floor. Lightly hug your block. Press your pubic bone down and then draw your navel up to your sternum so your tailbone can become long. Now lightly press into your hands. Draw your shoulders up to your ears, your shoulders onto your back. Isometrically begin to pull your hands back as your heart comes forward. Yeah. Now you might stay here, really drawing your belly button up to your sternum, really hugging into your block. You might reach back through the toes so far that they lift up and away and the legs are straight and you hug your block. You might start to let the hands hover off the floor. This time you might reach your arms back behind you. And as though you were holding a block behind you, I want you to imagine that you could squeeze your elbows in, like when we had those bent elbows, hugging the shoulder blades onto the back, reaching the heart forward. And you breathe for three, you breathe for two, you breathe for one, next exhale, lower down. Plant your hands alongside your lowest ribs. 
curl your toes under, hug your block, draw your shoulders up towards your ears, shoulder blades together on your back, pull your belly button away from the floor, and then when you're ready, either hands and knees or plank, and then back to downward facing dog. Three breaths. Again, Pez dispenser back behind you. Yep. Nice work. All right. Now, this is going to be ungraceful, but just plop your block to the floor. Nice. Yep. About time. Yeah, I know, Sandy. I'm sorry. And then kick that block off your mat or move it off the mat, whatever is going to work for you. Cool. This is going to be fun. Inhale, sweep your right leg up and back. Now, I want you to imagine that you can. Don't imagine, actually do this. Externally rotate your right leg and see how far you can send your right leg away from your left foot. How far can you move your right leg away from your left foot? How far can you move your right leg away from your left foot? Nice job. And you just pause and you breathe. And then as you're ready, lower the right foot back to meet its friend. And then you'll do that on the other side. Inhale, sweep your left leg up and back. And then see how far as you externally rotate that leg, you can move the feet away from each other. So you're kicking up through the left, you're reaching down through the right. Nice job, guys. Next exhale, lower both feet down. Lower your knees to the mat and take a rest in child's pose for a few breath cycles. Was that fun? I like that shape. Andy and the sarcasm. And you're just pausing and you're breathing. And I did set myself up for that, so like, we're good. Um, cool. And then when you're ready to move on, you'll start to walk your spine up to scent, to sit on your shin. Cool. We have a few more twisty things that I want us to do. Um, and I think before we do that, we should probably do one more back bend and then we'll do a twisty thing. So let's make sure that we're sitting on a blanket or a blanket is underneath our knees. So bring your blanket back to the middle of your space. And then your blocks, you'll relocate to the upper outer corners of your space. Okay, and then we'll come back to hands and knees. And I want you to look and make sure that your hips stay directly over your knees. So they don't move, they stay there the whole time. And then you're gonna walk one hand about 12 inches forward. So literally a foot and the other hand to meet you. Great, now I want you to push your hands down and forward and look forward at your hands for a little bit. And then as you push them forward, you'll isometrically start to pull them back as you lower your chest towards the floor. Lift up through your happy armpits and allow your head to descend between the space of your arms. Your head might come to the floor, it might not, but you're isometrically pulling your hands back. You're allowing your chest to melt towards the floor as you lift up through your happy inner armpits. Nice job, we've got three breath cycles here, finding a variation of Anahatasana. And then at the end of your next exhalation, you're going to start to come out of this. And you'll start to lift the chest and then walk the hands back to a hands and knees position. From there, you'll walk your blocks underneath your hands, or rather grab your blocks and put them underneath your shoulders. Great. And then from here, just step your left foot between your hands. Yay. Okay. Now, the first thing to, to do is check in with that back knee and make sure it's properly padded for you. So sometimes it feels good if you slide your shin bone forward so your kneecap drops off the front edge of your blanket. If that's like not something that you want to do or that feels good to revert to go back just a smidge. There you go. Awesome. And then from here, you might choose to stay here and just push down into front foot, push down into back shin and lift the chest up and say, happy as a client, I'm going to stay here. Some of you will start to walk both hands up the center of your left thigh. You might stay here. You might reach up through your right arm and then take a happy little side bend towards the right. And again, we're just trying to find a sensation opening on this right side body. And again, you might stay here and see if you can soften any tension around your neck and chest. Nice work. All right, let's go ahead and inhale and come back up through center. Bring both hands to heart center. You're going to start to push your chest forward into your thumb. Scoop the low belly and rotate to the left. Now your right elbow can hook outside of your left knee. As counterintuitive as this sounds, well, let me give this first. Push down into your front foot. 
push down into your back foot, push your left knee into your right elbow, then hug your right hip. That's the hip you're spinning away from. Hug that back. Yeah. And then see if you can scoop the low belly on the left side and rotate a little bit more towards the left. Nice work. Next in breath, you'll gently unwind. You'll bring your hands down to your blocks. Now we're gonna walk our right block a little bit towards the right. You might wiggle walk your left foot a little bit towards the left. And then check in with your back knee and see if you need to adjust it, but you're gonna bend your back knee, reach around with your left hand, grab the outside edge of your right foot. Yep, and then adjust. See if you need to draw your pelvis back towards your right heel. If you wanna draw your heel and pelvis forward towards your left heel. If you wanna push down into the right hand, left foot, right knee, and rotate your rib cage more towards the left. But you pause and you breathe and you say, hello, twisted monkey. And then very gently, you're gonna let go of your back foot. You're going to straighten your right foot down towards the floor. You're going to bring your hands to your blocks. You're going to wiggle walk your left foot back towards center as you shift your weight back and straighten your front leg long. Now, pay attention to what happens if the sole of your foot stays on the floor. That gives sensation in one specific place. I know, isn't that crazy? Or you might start to peel the sole of the foot up and away. And if you do that, you might then need to slide your left heel forward. But you choose whichever sensation is more interesting to you at this moment. And then notice if there is a tendency to avoid one more so than the other. And see if you can just notice that. We're not trying to do anything crazy today. Just notice that. Nice work. Heart still comes forward. Yep. And then as you're ready, you'll bend the knee, plant the foot on the floor, slide your left foot back to meet your right, lower your hands down to the mat or floor, and just take a cat and a cow and just feel how that feels. You might even choose to take a downward facing dog just to notice what you notice happening in the right side versus the left side of your body. And you just pause and you breathe and you pause and you breathe. And then when we're ready, we'll all come back to hands and knees. And we'll try all that on the other side. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to walk our hands onto our blocks, our blocks underneath our shoulders. Then step your right foot between your hands. Cool. Check in with your left knee. See if you need to adjust it so it's padded appropriately for you on this side, whatever that means. And you might stay there. You might start to push into your fingertips and make your chest a little lighter Stay here for looking for a stretch across the front of our left thigh. You might start to walk your hands up to the belly of your right thigh. You might stay here, softening any tension around your face. You might reach up through your left arm and then take a little side bend towards the left. And if you've chosen to do that, reaching up and then taking a side bend to the left, you are pausing and you're breathing. You're just noticing what that feels like. And those that are in the side bend, you'll gently inhale and come back up. Everyone will bring hands to heart center. Now, before we do this, push into front foot, push into back knee, lift up through heart. Start to hinge forward at your heart and then scoop the right low belly as you draw. That's fun on this side. You draw your left elbow to the outside edge of your right knee. Now, again, you push into your front foot, you push into your back shin, you push your right elbow right knee into your left elbow, scoop the low belly on the right side and rotate your rib cage towards the right. And you pause and you breathe. And you pause and you breathe and draw your outer left hip back. It's counterintuitive as that sounds. That's the back hip. The back hip, yep, so draw it out of the twist. This allows stabilization and then you rotate more through the rib cage, yep. Next in breath, gently unwind, hands come down to the floor. Now we're gonna wiggle walk our right foot a little to the right. We're gonna walk our left block a little bit forward and to the left. Readjust your back knee. And then you're going to bend your back knee, reach the right arm back and grab the outside edge of your right, sorry, of your left foot. And then notice, do you wanna draw your butt back towards your foot and then draw the whole pelvis configuration forward? Do you want to stay exactly as you are? How do you need to flex or point your left foot so the sensation stays in the belly of your left thigh and the heart stays open? Nice work. As you're ready, we'll gently release our left foot, 
straighten your left foot to the floor, draw your hands to your blocks, wiggle walk your right foot back towards your center of your hip socket and straighten your leg long. And first things first, notice what it feels like to keep the sole of your right foot on the floor. And then you might get curious and peel the whole sole of the foot away from the floor, slide your heel forward. Heart still comes forward and you just pause and you breathe and you notice. And if you did so on the first side, Laura, can you straighten your front leg for me? There you go. Um, notice if you liked better having the sole of the foot up or sole of the foot away from the floor. If one of those feels better, let me just see if maybe you can explore the opposite one as well. Nice work. All right, let's go ahead and bend the front knee. Come forward, plant your palms, step your right foot back maybe just to hands and knees or maybe to downward facing dog. But you'll take a few breath cycles wherever you are. Maybe down dog is where you're at for breath. Maybe hands and knees or child's pose is where you're at for a while. You just pause and breathe. Nice job. Fantastic. All right. So from hands and knees, start to make your way back to downward facing dog. Those in down dog, you're going to make your way to the top of your space. So however you want to get there, you're going to make the way to the top of your space. Once you get to the top of your space, separate your feet outer hip distance apart, maybe even outer mat distance apart. And then like you're a little football player, start to bend your knees at your butt back. Bring your hands to heart center and find yourself in malasana. And you'll just pause and you'll see if you can push your elbows into your knees like we did. Your heart lifts up, your low belly pulls in. And we'll just be here for three breath cycles. And if you can like totally sit in the pose, see if you can lift up just out of it a little bit. Great. And then gently release. Butt comes to the floor. Legs come in front of you. Um, this is a time I would encourage you to sit on a blanket if you've got one. You don't have to be heavily sitting, seated on it, but just sit on a blanket. Okay. And then we've got options here. So we're gonna start with our right leg. So let's go ahead and bend both of our knees. You're gonna slide your left foot underneath you towards the outside edge of your right hip. Great. And then you're gonna slide your right foot to the outside edge of your left thigh. Great. And then you might need to lift your butt up and slide your butt a little bit towards the left in order to have both sit bones equally suited. Now this is a point where if you need a block, you put a block. If you need to fold your blanket up, you fold your blanket up. Great. Now bring your right thumb to your right hip. I want you to really press your right hip down as you pull your right knee in. Push your right hip down, pull your right knee in. Yep, and lift up through the spine. Scoop the low belly, and maybe you can hug the right knee in a little bit closer. Push down into the big toe mount of your right foot, and then maybe you release your right hand back behind you on the floor. And then again, inhale, lift up through the spine. Exhale, scoop the low belly and rotate to the right. You just pause and you breathe and you notice if you can soften any tension around the shoulders. Let the chest remain magnanimous and open. That was not a good cue. Lift your chest to the sky. There we go. And then very gently, we're going to unwind. What, what? <laughs> that was not a good cue. Um, and then so we're going to slide our right foot forward just a little bit so that we can release the left. I mean, it was a it was a good image, but obviously it didn't work too well. So now we're going to take, actually, before we do that, stay here for a moment. Uh, hands back alongside your hips. If you need to remove blankets, please do that. Push down through your hands. Hug your elbows towards each other. Shoulder blades onto the back. And then like a little flapper girl on the back of a truck, lift your chest. Push down through feet. Lift up through heart. Nice job. And then we'll gently release out of that. And we'll try the other side. So this time we're going to bend our right knee, slide our right foot outside of our left hip. And then we're going to cross our right foot outside of our left, sorry, left foot outside of our right thigh. Push down into the floor, lift your hips, and maybe slide them a little bit to your right. 
great. And if you need to sit up on block or fold blanket under, by all means, do that. Left thumb comes to left hip, right hand comes to left knee. Really externally rotate. You push the thumb into the hip and roll the outer left hip to the floor as you pull the left knee towards the right armpit. And then you pause and you breathe and you notice that you can evacuate more space in the left side body. You might choose to stay here. You might release the left hand to the floor. But again, you're lifting up through the chest. Proud heart, open heart, generous heart. Shoulders soften away and you rotate to your left. Make sure your left big toe is still pushing down into the floor. Nice work. Magnetic. Magnanimous chest. I mean, I don't know. It seems like it should be. <laughs> what does magnanimous chest do then? Gently come out of the shape. Oh, I like that. Slide your left foot forward, your right foot forward. This time you're going to straighten both legs long. Again, hands on the floor. If you need to remove your blanket for a minute, you do that. Hands on the floor alongside your hips. Bend the elbows, draw the shoulder blades together, heart lifts up. So feet are active, pushing down through your heels, heart lifts up. And you just pause and you breathe. And you pause and you breathe. Nice work. Okay. Now gently come out of that. This one, my ankles happen to be sensitive. If your ankles happen to be sensitive, you might do this as well, but we're gonna just take uh, Sukhasana. So you will cross your ankles underneath your knees. I would encourage, uh, we should probably all do the same thing. It doesn't matter, we're gonna do both. Okay, so we'll have our left shin in front. That looks like what the, that's what people at home were doing. Or, in person are doing and then go ahead and remove your flesh from underneath your sit bones our blocks are here in case if you need this okay and we're just going to start to hinge forward at our hips i want you to pay attention to how active you need to make your feet in order to keep your knees safe in order to find the sensation so we're ideally trying to look for an outer hip stretch i always feel this more in my low back for some reason in my pelvis but we're looking for an outer hip stretch. And so you can walk your hands as far forward as you want. And we'll just take a few breath cycles here, feeling how this feels as we're in this forward fold and external hip rotating pose. And the block is there, or blocks are there if you need a little bit of support, either underneath the elbows or the forearms or underneath your head. We've got one more breath cycle here. And then on your next exhale, start to walk your hands back, start to bring your spine up, take a moment to pause. Close your eyes and just notice how it feels to sit now. How does the spine feel? How does the breath feel? How do you feel? And then we'll switch whichever leg is um, in front. So for most of us, that means the right shin bone should come in front now, left shin bone back behind us. Again, take the opportunity to remove any flesh that might be underneath your sit bones. And then our blocks are here if we need and or want them, but we're going to start to hinge forward at our hips. And you might notice that one side is drastically different than the other. Notice how active your feet need to be for you, for your knees to be okay. And you just pause and you breathe. And you pause and you breathe. And just notice what you notice. Nice work. Very gently, we'll start to come out of this shape. So you'll start to walk your hands back. You start to bring your spine up to vertical. You'll take a moment to just pause and be still. Fantastic. All right, if you have a blanket underneath you, you might want to move that. And our last little thing here. So we'll bring our feet in front of us. Once again, Dandasana. Hands alongside our hips. Fingertips face forward. And then you're going to bend your elbows. Draw the elbows towards each other. Heart and sternum lift up. And you really want to, with the elbows bent, it really pushes the chest forward. And you just feel how that feels. And this is the same shape that you are going to keep in your back. So just take a moment to notice how that feels. Notice that 
shape, make a mental imprint. And then bend one knee and plant the foot on the floor. Bend the other knee, plant the foot on the floor. Keep that shape in your back. Push down through your feet. Push down through your hands. Lift your hips high. Push down through the hands. Find that same shape in your back. And then when you're ready, lower the pelvis back down. Straighten the leg long and sit up for a moment. Cool. Go ahead and turn around. Everybody turn around. And then slowly make your way onto your back. Now we are moving towards our Shavasana. So if you are cold or your body tends to get cold before you lie down, you might want to put on socks or a sweatshirt or any of those things. But we're going to make our way onto our back. And when you find yourself on your back, we'll take a moment to pause and we'll take a moment to breathe. And please make sure your block is somewhere nearby. All right. And then let's go ahead and bend both of our knees and plant our feet on the floor. Grab your block and slide your block between your inner upper thighs, first or second setting. And this is probably going to be a little bit mean, so I apologize in advance. Open your arms out to the right and to the left in a T shape. Actually, no. No. Uh, let's lift your shin bones first. You will get there eventually. So lift your shins parallel to the floor. Bring your hands to the tops of your thighs. I want you to push your hands into your thighs so hard that your thighs have to kick back into your hands. And then I want you to check in with your low back and see if you can keep your natural curve of your low back as you pull your belly button to your spine. And then see if you can flex or point your feet. You're hugging into your block. And we're trying to see if our core will work with this. So you're really pushing your hands in and kicking your knees in. And you're seeing if your belly button can draw down. And we'll breathe for three. I know that's not fun. For two. I apologize in advance. For one. Doesn't matter. I know that's not fair. And then let's open our arms out into a T-shape. Okay. Fantastic. Keep your legs active. Take a big breath in. As you exhale, your legs are going to fall towards your left. Don't let the legs touch the floor. Squeeze your bottom leg into your top leg, your top leg into your bottom leg. Don't let your right shoulder come off the floor. And then inhale, you'll come back up through center. And exhale, you'll go to the other side. And we'll take a couple breaths here. You're pushing the bottom leg into the top leg, the top leg into the bottom leg. The left shoulder down into the floor. Nice job. Inhale, come back up through center. You've got three more sets on your own. So you take about two breaths on each side. And we want to keep about a 90 degree angle. So don't let your knees creep up towards your shoulders. And inhale, come back up. And then when you're ready, go to the other side. And when you're twisting, the shoulder that you're going away from ideally doesn't leave the floor. The belly button stays engaged towards the spine. Oh, you guys are doing great. Look at you go. I think you should have one more set after this. Didn't I say four sets total? Okay. <laughs> I thought I led you through one and then I said three more on your own. So that's four sets total. Okay, so this should be our four set, right? <laughs> oh man, I will promise one day. Actually, I won't count. Yeah. <laughs> And then gently come back to center, release your feet to the floor, release the block, and just take a moment to pause and breathe. And just pause and breathe. You might wiggle walk your feet outside of your hips and let the knees knock in. You might cross the arms over the body, but just take a few moments to pause and breathe. Pause and breathe. Great. And as you check in with the body now, notice if there's any final shape or shape that might feel good to you. Like you might feel nice to do a supported bridge. You might want to do figure four. You might want to do a happy baby. You might want to do a supported, uh, it's called lung bench to open up the chest and the heart space as you relax. But just allow yourself to check in and 
see what feels like your body might be calling for, asking for, needing, and then give yourself permission to go ahead and explore that. And whatever you choose might be drastically different in this moment than it would be in a different moment, and that's okay. What's most important is that you breathe and you honor whatever your whatever signal, whatever messages your body is sharing with you. You've got about one more minute or so doing whatever you happen to be doing. So if you are doing something that is asymmetrical, I would encourage you to visit the other side. And then when you feel satiated, whatever that means to you for right now, I want you to start to make your way to your final resting shape. And when you find yourself in your final shape, first thing you always do is to fidget until you feel like your right and your left side can equally relax. And to do that, you might need to do different things on each side. And then once you feel like your body is sort of settled, I want you to take three breaths and you'll just take the breath in through the nose and then an audible exhale through the mouth. And you'll do two more just like that. And after your third exhalation, You will allow your awareness to rest wherever the breath feels most alive for you. And so that could be that the breath is in your nose, the tips of the nostrils. You might feel the breath very active in the rib cage. You might feel it in the abdomen. Wherever the breath is most alive for you at this moment. Just allow your awareness to rest in that spot and watch the breath as it enters the body. Watch as it exits the body. Notice the impact it has on the musculature around that space. And any time your awareness or your mind wanders, you lovingly notice that and then bring your awareness back to the breath. We'll leave you here with you for a few more moments and I'll let you know when it's time to come out.
return your awareness to your breath. As you come back to your breath, take a moment to check in. Notice if there's any part of you longing to linger in this shape. And if there is, by all means, please stay here. Movement does start to call you. Allow it to enter into the body slowly and gently. So the movement will start to make your way to one of your sides. So in stillness again, stay as long as you'd like. <clears throat> when you are on your side, you'll just pause there for a few breath cycles. Gently, you'll begin to press your top hand into the floor and draw your spine up into a tall and comfortable seat. When you are vertical, I would encourage you to sit on something, whether it's a block or a blanket. And take the opportunity to once again fidget in whatever way feels appropriate for you. But you can find again that sweet spot, that sense of effortful ease or easeful effort where the heart is open, the chest is magnanimous. We practice because it allows us to show up in the best possible way for ourselves and for others, to keep our heart open, to find that state where we can be caring and loving for ourselves as well as caring and loving for others. It's that integration of effort and ease. And so as you're here for these last few breaths, I'd like you to just take a moment to an internal prayer of gratitude for all that it takes for you to show up as you do, as the loving, bright individual that you are, for all the people that you source and that you support. We'll go ahead and complete our practice with a collective breath followed by a collective ohm. Draw your hands to heart center. Maybe press the palms into each other. Receive the weight of your thumbs into your sternum and then lift your sternum into your thumbs. Soften your chin just a smidge and then exhale all the breath from the mouth. Take a big breath in. Audible exhale. Inhale for OM, join if you'd like. Oh. Are your thumbs to your third eye? May our thoughts be clear. Try your thumbs to your lips. May our words be kind. And draw your thumbs to your heart center. May our hearts be open to that light, to that breath, to that sweet spot within each of us. We bow. Namaste.